All right, welcome to Unit 14B, The Eye. I am Anna Galletly, and we are going to explore the eye anatomy. All right, when you start studying your eye anatomy, go to your terms list and find all the different structures, okay? Um, what you're going to have over here, and the labeling is pretty good, so I don't know if you really need me to go over that. The one thing that wasn't labeled really in this picture is the eyelid right here and right here. And that is called the superior palpebrae, and the one down here is called um, the inferior palpebrae, okay? So palpebrae just means eyelid, so you should just be familiar with the term, okay? So you can see how the muscles of the eye, or the forehead, come down right here, and you've also got a muscle there. Those are supposed to lift your eyelids to open them, okay? Then what I want you to notice is that I've got this mucosa coating the inside of my eyelid that then comes around and reflects and only coats the very front of the eyeball that's exposed to air. And then it goes and it wraps around the inferior palpebrae on the inside. That is your conjunctiva, okay? That's uh, a clear mucous membrane that covers it. Now, underneath the conjunctiva directly is a window that's a little bit stiffer um, and that is the cornea. And then you can see within the cornea your iris, which is the colored part of your eye, and then the pupil, which is a hole. All of the white, whether it's here or all the way back, is called sclera. You can, of course, also see some of the extrinsic eye muscles. Okay. Now, if we come over here and we look at the anterior view, you can see the superior palpebrae, the inferior palpebrae. Now, here, you have to assume that this is all coated with conjunctiva. And then underneath the conjunctiva here is the cornea, and underneath the conjunctiva here and here is the sclera. And then behind the cornea, you will have the iris, and then the hole that goes through the entire thing is the pupil. Up here is the lacrimal gland. You can kind of feel it if you kind of stick your finger up underneath your, the bone of your eye right up in here. This creates tears, which come out of these little ducts, and then when you blink, it sweeps it over to this internal structure here, where it gets um, taken through these canaliculi for the lacrimal, and then it empties into the lacrimal sac through the nasal lacrimal duct and into the nose, where you can either swallow it or have it drip out the front. All right, so we've looked at most of these structures, but let's look at the little angles a little bit differently. So you can see that they've kind of cut right here, the conjunctiva, so you can see it flipping up a little bit. But right up here in the superior palpebrae and the inferior, we have what is called the tarsal gland, all right? The old name for it was meibomian gland, which is what I tend to remember it as because that's what I learned it as, that also secretes lubricating fluid, which has some lysosomes, which helps to clean it and stuff, okay? Now, because of the way this one is cut, you're not seeing the lacrimal. So we're gonna come over here, and you can see the frontal bone, the edge of the eye orbit. There's that lacrimal gland with those ducts, which are gonna come down in here, and you can see the tarsal glands or meibomian glands here in the eyelids. When you get a sty, it's often in one of these glands that you're feeling that sty. All right, next slide. All right, so let's look at the histology of the conjunctiva. Now, I won't put this on the test, but I think it's cool for you to see the picture. I mean, you have to know the conjunctiva, but I won't necessarily ask you to identify this slide. But what I like is that you can see you've got this special epithelium. It's non-keratinized, simple columnar with goblet cells. Now, this picture, because of the way it's cut, it kind of looks like it's stratified columnar, but that's just an artifact for the way it's cut. Um, but you can see the little goblet cells in here, which I think are just adorable. And those are secreting that lubricating mucus that's going to go um, onto the surface of your eyeball. Okay. All right, so this is just another slide with a little bit more information on your lacrimal gland. So also a lubricant moistens the surface, so it's mostly a saline solution, which you should know because when you taste your tears, they're salty. But it also has got um, lysosomes in it, which help with cleaning. All right, let's go and look at our model now, okay? Um, now, there are lots of different models. I'm using these because they're not in your practice atlas, okay? But I like these models, so they show some other structures. So right here, I see my lacrimal gland. And the same thing right here, I can see 
the lacrimal, okay? And then here are the little ducts that go in here. Now this is my superior palpabri, inferior palpabri, okay? Um, here I can see my sclera. That, now look at the way that's cut, okay? That is showing that part of the cornea has been cut out. So that is your cornea. Now coating the entire thing, which isn't showing uh, up on this model, would be the conjunctiva. So you just have to remember that it's there, okay? Now the lubricating fluid from your lacrimal gland would come down through in here, okay? And then it'll get drained into the canaliculi and here into the lacrimal sac and then the lacrimal sac would actually drain down into the nose through the nasal lacrimal duct and that's not shown in this picture okay and you can see again the sac right here which would be coming down and it basically go behind the bone and into that area okay all right next slide all right let's look at our extrinsic eye muscles now and if you look at the model you can see, and they're all labeled really nicely so you can see them easily. So you've got the superior oblique, which has a little tendon that it goes through, that comes around and it goes over to the eye. Now if we look over here at the table, it tells you it depresses and does lateral rotation, so down into the side. And then the controlling nerve, which is the trochlear nerve. Now most of this you should already have memorized from doing the cranial nerve. So what do you need to know? You need to be able to identify the muscle, all right, on a picture, you need to know the action and you need the controlling nerve, okay? So you can go through and label that and practice that. All right, so let's cut the eye open and start looking at the internal anatomy. And what you're gonna find are three tunics. The outermost tunic, so a tunic means layer or coat. You've got the sclera and cornea. They are one tunic, they are the fibrous tunic. The cornea is clear, the sclera is white. Now remember the conjunctiva will be coating just the outside right here and the conjunctiva is not part of this fibrous tunic. Now the cornea needs to be clear so that light can go through it and then pass on in, okay? Now the middlemost layer is called the choroid which I think is labeled on the next picture and then you've got the retina right in here, so three tunics. Now <clears throat> we can also divide the eye into the anterior and posterior segments or anterior posterior chamber. The anterior chamber is going to have a liquid in it called aqueous humors. The posterior chamber is filled with vitreous humors. So this is basically jelly. You may have heard of eye jelly um, from books or movies or if you've ever dissected a cow eyeball. It's real and it really is gelatinous. Okay, and that's all right in there. All right, continuing on. So now I do have the choroid label, which is this pink layer with pigmentation and blood vessels in it. All right, not that I, the arrow comes a little far forward. It should be right there, okay? Now, if you follow the choroid up, it transitions into a layer of smooth muscle that's a little bit wider. And we call this the ciliary body or ciliary muscle. The ciliary muscle attaches with suspensory ligaments. So these little strings are the suspensory ligaments which attach to the lens. And when these things contract, they pull on the lens and it makes it change its shape so that you can focus light onto the just the perfect spot of your retina. All right, now continuing on, we have more smooth muscle. You got two layers, a circular and a longitudinal. This is your iris, okay? This is the colored part of your eye. And in the middle of the iris, there is a hole, and that hole is called the pupil, and it lets light come in, which goes onto the lens, which then focuses it to the best spot for um, clear vision over here. Now, I mentioned already that this layer is filled with aqueous humors. Okay, so just, it's kind of like a saline solution. It's like your tears or your interstitial fluid or your blood plasma, all right? And it's all in here and down over in here and down over in here. Now you're constantly making it, which means if you don't resorb it, you're gonna get a lot of swelling in your eyeball and then it's gonna hurt and it's gonna cause damage and you're gonna go blind and then you're gonna, you know, basically it's called glaucoma. So that needs to be drained and you got two holes for draining it right here, which is down there and right down there. Um, oh God, what's the new name for that? 
I call it the Canal of Schlem because that's what I learned. It's like the scleral venous. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. There's a new name that's in your book that they're using in um, the Saladin book. Um, and I've always called it the Canal of Schlem. Um, but it, it'll be in your terms list. So we'll go look that up at some point in time. All right, so now we're looking at the internal most layer, and that is going to be this layer, which is the retina. All right, this is where you're going to have your photoreceptors. And notice that the retina coats the entire inside here, and then all in here, and then over in here, and then it comes together right here. These are axons that you're seeing, and the photoreceptors are in there as well. But they're coming into here, and then they merge right there. But notice I've also got blood vessels right here. Okay, so that there's no photoreceptors or nerves here. This is called the optic disc, which is another word for blind spot. If you focus light right here, you can't see it because there's no photoreceptors. All right, all of these come together to form your optic nerve. Now we've got one other structure that I want you to learn, and it's difficult to see, and it's a little pit right here, and that is the fovea centralis, and um, you have cone photoreceptors in there. So that is your area of sharpest vision, finest vision, color vision, all right? And then surrounding it, we have a higher concentration of uh, cones for photoreceptors for color vision so that you get a little bit more sharp vision over here, but the absolute best spot to get light is right there if you're trying to have a good, clear image. So this is the last slide that we're gonna look at for the eye anatomy. And we're looking more closely at the retina, which is also called the sensory tunic, okay? And so what you can see is I've got my fibrous tunic right there, which is the sclera in this case, but remember it also becomes the um, cornea. And then right there, that is the choroid or the pigmented layer, okay? And then you've got this section, which is gonna be your retina. Now, one thing that's a little weird is you will notice that right in here, that's the neural layer, that's where you have your photoreceptors right there. And then kind of in front of them is all the axons that are coming out. So the light has to get here, and then it comes up here and it goes that way. And then that merges to form the optic nerve. Now here you can see more closely, right here, that, oh, I don't like that color. Oh, that's a highlighter, that's why that's not working. Um, so you can see right there that there's no photoreceptors. Actually, this entire layer, there's no photoreceptors. You can see it ends right here and right here. So if you shine light anywhere right here, you can't see it. So that is your optic disc which is also called the blind spot. Now, if I ask you what the name of it is on a quiz, you need to say optic disc, not blind spot. Just know that it's a blind spot because there's no photoreceptors. All right, now down here, you see this divot? That is that fovea centralis where you have your cones. All right, and then um, this surrounding area right in here and right in here is where you would have the macula lutea, which is also a high concentration of um, cones. Now, throughout the rest of the retina, you're gonna have the rods, the rod photoreceptors. So all in here, all over in here, all throughout the sides, and that is more for monochromatic, black and white, gray shading color, uh, not color, so shades of gray, basically. All right. So that is the end of our eye anatomy, and now we are gonna go on to 14C and look at the ear.